So I deleted, I deleted create.sql. Does it still work? It's not in develop yet. Uh, um, ask Bamboo. Um, so this is actually a continuation of the work that I started last year uh, and didn't finish and didn't even look at at all between last year and this year. Um, removing create.sql was still used by our integration tests. So anytime a, you can request a database from a lot of our integration test framework, and you can either request an empty one or a populated one. And if you requested a populated one, it would load up create.sql. Um, that was literally the last thing that was around using it. Um, so to get rid of that, I had to change our integration tests to use uh, all the stuff with Liquibase to create databases. But have you, as you've seen in upgrades, that takes a while. So we looked at strategies to create a database once and then have it reused across a lot of integration tests. Uh, so last year I started the work to rip out um, installer DB, which was all the code that went along with create.sql to uh, um, well, parse create.sql, create databases, et cetera. Uh, and this year I finished up the stuff to replace it with uh, uh, code for Liquibase. Um, and what it does, so let me show you what's currently in my database. Nothing, just the default Postgres stuff. And if I go and run a test that requires a test database, it'll start up and it'll say, hey, I don't have an, an integration test database, I'm gonna create one. So it runs the migrator to create an integration test database. Um, and then this will take on my, system, on my really old system, 20 or 30 seconds. It'll create that database. Um, let's go see what you even see at the end. Yeah, it's <laughs> blast from the past. It runs vacuum analyze, adds IP like. It does all the same stuff that the installer does. I actually copied the code from the installer and by the time uh, now I got to the point where I've refactored it and they're both calling the same method in the migrator, the installer and the integration test stuff which is great because you now know that you're literally doing the same thing. Um, so that took 29 seconds to run. Let me go and run it again. Initializing the mock logger, it adds the stuff to the database because it already exists. That took 3.5 seconds. So let's go and show you how long it takes to do an entire test worth of, or uh, set of classes, tests in the class, sorry. Did I not do this right? It's the, it's there the we go. So what it does when it starts running, um, it goes and looks for the Liquibase change log, loads the change log, and then looks and then loads every log, every Liquibase file under that, and it hashes all those together in an MD5 hash, and it looks for a database named OpenNMS underscore IT underscore template underscore the hash of all that Liquibase stuff. Um, if it doesn't find it, it creates it, runs Liquibase and does all of that. If it does find if it, that's what happens if it doesn't find it. Um, if it does find it, it will then just make a copy of that database that's specific to the test and use that. And let's just look at how long it takes to run create.sql versus doing this. So it took about a second to load create.sql and it took about 0.65 seconds to do it with just copying the existing integration test database. Um, and actually that, if I run it multiple times, that'll get down to less than half a second. So that gets pretty speedy. Um, so what happens if I change the change log? Oh look, I put in a new line. So it's running the migrator again. It detected that there was a change. It's gonna create a new integration test template database, populate it, and then the test from there on will use that. Here's a lovely log of every single thing that's happening in the background. Yeah. So here's the actual code in the installer that does the database work. It prints some stuff out. It calls setup database. And if you told it to remove the database, it will do that and then drop the file that says the database was done. In the installer.java file, this is the entirety of the database code now. Everything else has been moved into setup database, which is what the integration test framework uses. 
So I go back here, look at my databases, I now have a new one. So the A71 was the first one, the 081 is the one after I added a new line. And you can go and delete these, it'll repopulate them as needed um, and still be all happy. Did that create it? Oh, yes. That was, uh, so that was my, my, my time earlier. That's where it said 0.65 seconds. That was me oh, okay. doing the same thing the, so the, the installer does. Separate in the Correct. Yeah, they're all in the same instance. And then the, uh, whoops. In the test code, it pretty much just decides if you're going to populate the schema, it then goes and gets the name of the integration test database based on the current Liquibase configuration and then just copies it. It's this with template. So create database database name and you can say with template blah and it'll copy it from that database instead of template one. Have you guys ever noticed problems running tests with errors on template one? Um, I ran into that today and uh, started looking at ways to make that better. Um, and this will be the last thing. There we go. I'm looking at moving our administrative data source from template one to uh, Postgres. When you connect to Postgres, you have to tell it a database to connect to. Well, what happens if you haven't created your database yet? Um, so it has this template one database, which is supposed to be the source of all other databases. The problem is you can't copy a database if other users are accessing it. So if you have multiple connections to template one, even though one of those is to copy the database, you have another connection out there that's talking to it and Postgres will, it'll, it'll wait a while, it'll try for five or 10 seconds and it'll say, someone else is on template one, you can't copy the database. So, if I go and run this, it'll fail. What I'm, so what I'm looking at doing is I'm looking at changing the database we connect to from template, template one to Postgres. Assuming we always have a Postgres user, that's the user we're connecting as, there should always be a database for that user. So I'm gonna experiment with this a little bit more. We'll have to try it on different distributions <coughs> and make sure it works. And make sure the installer, there's an easy way for people to change it if that one doesn't work. Or maybe I'll just do it for the unit tests. Why did this succeed? It's because I changed the, I didn't drop the database. Yep, there we go. Hey, look, that database doesn't exist. So the other thing that I've done along this is to try to make the database test run even more reliably um, and to spit out more details when there's a problem. So here in this case, uh, this one just failed because there was concurrent access to the template one database. Um, but what I'm now doing is I'm catching that and I'm spitting out a list of all the users that are connected to that database. So we can go and try to debug what's going on. So if you see here this ID 5058002, that's a Postgres um, PID. If I make my FGREP properly. So this gives me some data on what they connected to uh, and what was going on. That one's weird. The only thing doing, the only thing that did on that session was um, see who accessed the template, the template one database after the error was, was going on. Um, but so what I'm doing is I'm adding more debugging to help figure out what's going on in the case of an error. And maybe we can add the logs to log query uh, parameters or commands that are run to Postgres and also the PID of the user that ran them. So when we have errors, we can go chase them down, fix the bugs and make the, the integration test more reliable. So that's what I got. Yes? Does it look for more than one change log XML? Because we do have a couple. Uh, yes, every single one in, that it finds in the. So if we have, do we have one, do we have multiple other than the ones we use for tests? Well, so like NCS has its own change log that gets stuck in the class path at runtime and is pulled in by install. Okay. Okay, I'll have to, 
it should do the right thing, but what I need to make sure is it does the right thing in integration tests. So what you're not seeing is the class path hell that I probably spent more than half of my week in. Um, there was a problem in Eclipse where Eclipse wouldn't see in its default class path the Liquibase files. They just weren't there at all if you had the core schema package also in Eclipse. If you didn't have the core schema package in Eclipse, it did the right thing, Maven found it. And it's all because we packaged Liquibase files as a separate file. Um, and Eclipse wasn't loading, it didn't know what the source was to that file, so it couldn't add it when the package is there. Yeah, it's a separate attachment under the same project. Yeah. Um, but it works if that core schema package isn't in Eclipse while you're doing this. Uh, so I hacked a, a way around that, um, and then I ran into another problem where down, some downstream projects, for whatever reason, again, don't see the Liquibase schema. And if that's the case, I go in and I go and find on the file system where it is, I add the directory to it. Um, so it's working at least for the core database schema. What I need to do is figure out how to make sure it works with those other ones. The installer does the right thing. The installer looks at all of them. Um, and actually all the, the integration test code does the right stuff too. It's just about making sure those things are in the class path and all the different common situations that we run integration tests in. Yep. I'll find out if they. Oh. Yeah. One of my hundred twenty or so failures right now that I think I'm looking at. Any other questions? I know integration tests are almost as exciting as documentation. Cool. Thank you.